Hey drummers, it's Rob Litton here from drumsaword.com. Well, welcome to this free video song lesson where today I'm going to show you how to play the entire song, one of my favourite James Bond themes. The song is Live and Let Die by Paul McCartney and Wings, drummed by Danny Sewell. Sewell. Uh, Denny Sewell, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, you can download the full PDF drum chart from my website. There's a link beneath this video for free, so you can have this printed out in front of you as we go through this lesson together. It's going to make things a lot easier for you to understand if you have this out in front of you as I explain the sections. And there are a lot of sections. This is a, a real orchestral piece, this, um, and the drums happen to be very exciting along the way. So really cool lesson this, looking forward to teaching you it. If you want to make any of your, your own song suggestions, then please go over to my Facebook page. You'll find the link also beneath this video. That's the best place to make song suggestions over there. You'll see a post pinned to the top of my page and you can type your song suggestions in there. Like this song was today, this one was recommended over there. So, let's get cracking. We got the drums coming in properly at 32 seconds. We start off with the initial tempo of 60 BPM. Now the tempo does change a little bit, um, speeds up, slows down, um, but it starts at 60 BPM. And uh, the drums come in, like I say, at 32 seconds, and we got these stabs with the rest of the band. So the stabs are going on one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's one and four every two bars. Between that though, what Denny does is he plays some drum fills to sort of lead us into those stabs. So the first bar we get one, two, three, sorry, one, two, three, four. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing a set of 30 second note triplets on the uh of beat two. Now this, this makes, the lesson much more complicated for me to explain. You don't really have to understand how to count it. What I'm doing is I'm feeling, feeling the last note land on beat three, and it's four notes. It's like a roll, single stroke roll, and you've got to lead into beat three. Don't worry about counting it, it's too fast to count, but understand that there's four notes there. It's 30 second note triplets, so very fast, and we get this. One, two, three, four. See, I rolled into beat three there, getting it as close to beat three as possible. One, two, three, four. So if you find this too difficult, you could also play something else, which, which, is, which is what it almost sounds like also, just two notes. One, two, three, four. It almost sounds like that because they're the accent notes that are popping out. But if you listen carefully, you can hear a flurry of notes underneath. So if you just want to play one, two, three, four, that will work as well. I'm just playing one, two, a uh, three, just a uh, three on the floor tom, or between two toms, one, two, three, four. But what I'm hearing, what I believe that it's actually being played on the recording is this, one, two, three, four. It also sounds a bit more powerful rolling into um, that last note on beat three. One, two, three. You get this flam on beat three on the snare drum, one, two, three. And then very quiet in the mix, you can hear a bass drum being played on beat four, Four, which leads us into the next two bars, which is basically a repeat of the first two bars. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. But that second, that fourth bar there, second bar of the two bar phrase, doesn't have the bass drum on beat four this time. There's a gap left there. Then we go on to the next two bars, which are the same as the first two, exactly the same. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And that last bar, is a little bar of three, four. So we're just cutting off one of the beats to that bar. Instead of counting one, two, three, four, we're gonna count one, two, three, one, and then back to beat one for the next line where it goes back to four beats per bar. So don't get too confused by that. Again, you don't really have to count it either. If you know the song inside out like I do, then you can sort of just hear the melody. One, da, 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 da. one two, three, one. It's exactly the same up to beat three, one, two, three. But we don't get that crash on beat four. Instead, that crash on beat four is actually beat one of the next line. So it's a cool transition where it smoothly goes into this new section where the tempo feels like it speeds up a little bit. Before we go to the next section, what I've called part one, uh, let's go through that intro again. So just slowly, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, Mr. Bass Drum. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two. You sort of feel a slight increase in tempo there. So part one, as I just showed you, is quite simple. It's quite hard to hear the bass drums 
um, on, on this recording. So I, I'm pretty sure this is what he's playing. It keeps it simple. The basic drum beat is this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. But again, we get these band stabs and Denny is um, filling up to these stabs or around these stabs. So the first three bars, standard stuff. One, two, three, four. That third bar though, it ends with one, two, three, four, a one. Left, right, that right hand is on beat one of the next bar, a one and two and. And these are the stabs here with the rest of the band and the orchestra, the and of one and the and of two. Uh, one and two and three and four. And we get this bass drum on the end of beat three before the flam on snare drum on beat four resolves it down to the downbeat again. So we get that last bar, a lot of upbeats. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Feel free to use different crash symbols if you like. So the last two bars there. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. So the next line goes on, and we've got two more bars of the groove with the crash and beginning. Then bar three, even simpler than the first, uh, the, the first line, we get one, two, three, and four, and. So we're playing those snare drums on their own, on the and of three and four, and it, those offbeat ands go into the last bar, one, and two, and three, and four. So that, that's the same as the bar above it, except without the leading into it. So the last two bars, one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. One. Then we're into um, the next section we're called part two, strangely enough. And what I've got here is note, this part incorporates the bongo part as well. So this was a very hard section to hear on the recording because the bongo and the rest of the band, bongo, the percussions, parts and the rest of the orchestra and band are quite loud in the mix compared to the drums, but this makes sense to me, this, this is what I'm feeling. Uh, we're playing floor tom up with the right hand, one and two and three and four and bass drum is gonna be um, staying the same, snare drum on two and four as well. One, two, three, four, one, two, three and four, one, two, three and four. Now you could just play that. With the rest of the band and the orchestra, that will work really well. But if you play it with, with you know, a four piece band um, or, or in your bedroom and you wanna have a bit of fun, then what I've done here is I've said, no, this, this part incorporates the bongo part as well. So we get these extra notes occurring on the and of two and the and of four. One, two, and a three, and four, and a one, two, and a three, and four, and a one, two, and a three, and four, and a one. Left hand's coming over to the floor tom there to play those extra parts which match match the bongo part pretty well. So you could just play, this is probably what Denny's actually playing, but if you want to sort of make it sound more like the recording, and the way it comes out of it, again it's quite hard to hear with the rest of the band, bar three we get one, two, three and four and, so two snare drums there, four and, and then up to your highest tom, one and, and then next lowest, two and, and then lowest, three and four and. So you could play one and two and three and four. I play that, like that. It doesn't really matter what sticking you use. But those last two bars, one, two, three, sorry. One, two, and a three and four, and one and two and three and four and one. So we get one and two and three and four and one. To our next section. So now let me play for you the intro, part one and part two, up to speed without me talking over the top so you can hear just the drums. Here we go. So for part three, 
we got um, uh, basically just this groove. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Simple as that. The first four bars. Second line is the same. Starts the same. But then notice the second bar. We get this um, offbeat stabs on um, going across the bars in an interesting way. We get one and two and three and four. The snare drums following the band stabs on the end of two and four. And if you notice, the, the, the band stabs are occurring one and two and three and four and one and two and three. It's occurring every three eighth notes. So what gives it this interesting um, movement across the bar. Um, so we get uh, one, two and three and four. Going into the last bar there where it continues, one and every three notes, but notice that bar is five beats long. I didn't have to write it as five beats, I could have written it as four, but if you listen to the melody of the song, the rest of the orchestra, that bar of five goes with the melody, uh, and then it resolves on the next line, so if you're counting along with it, it feels more comfortable to count that as a bar of five, um, rather than a bar of four with an extra note at the end. So um, we get this one and two, and this is where it's very hard to hear on the mix, I think he plays this, and three, and four, and three, and four, and I think it's the bass drum with three and four with the floor tom, because those notes sound a bit stronger, and um, it's like, like, like a bass drum's been playing. And three, and four, five, and I think there's a flat one, there's a flam on beat five. So that last, that second line, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, and four, and one. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and one. Then the next line, we get the same idea again, but um, starting on beat one. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two. Then this, 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 it, it, this bit is also very hard to hear on the mix. I think he plays and three, and three, so instead of and three, it's just and three. Then four and, and then a bar of three at the end, just three notes long, three, uh, one and two and three and, and I'm, I, I really can't be 100% sure what he's playing in that bar in that section. That was very hard to hear on the recording. I, he must be playing something, so I can feel something going on in the background. So I've just written it as, as snare drum to keep it simple, uh, rather than make up something. So you can play anything you like in that bar, but I think he's just playing, which works as well, you know, it keeps it simple. So that last line, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and one. We're into our next section. So part four, we've got this reggae part, which is really cool. Um, probably the hardest part of the song to play though. We get, uh, for the first bar, one, two and three, four. So we've got the cross stick on the end of two there. One, two and three, four. The, the basic pattern of this section is the bass drum on beat three and the hi-hats quarter notes on two and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you're feeling that bass drum, that big bass power note as beat three, not beat one. You're skipping over beat one most of the time. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. You're not emphasizing beat one, I should say. So make sure you feel that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, Make sure you feel that way around. So we get one, two, and three, four. Second bar, one, two, three, four. Third bar, that first note on beat one is a ghosted hi-hat note. So it's to do with the way he's probably playing the stick like this. You naturally with this upstroke, get a, get a quieter hi-hat note. It also helps with the groove because you're not emphasizing beat one. You could leave out those, those notes in brackets if you wanted to, but they're on the recording, so one, two, and three, four, and, so two, and three, four, and. Then this, this point, that trickiest bar, we get one, and two, and three, and four. So one, and two, and, but with the open high at the end there, one, and two, and, closes with beat three, just after it, one, and two, and three, then beat four, or bass drum on its own, close on beat one. So notice how the cross stick is actually emphasizing beat three there. One and two and three, four, one, two and three, four. One and two and three, four, one, two and three. So notice how the hi-hat closes there. Four, one, one on its own on beat one of the next bar, where we get one, two and three, four. 
And then the last two bars, we get that hi-hat ghost note on beat one. One, two, and three. Four, one, two, and three. Four. That surprise crash symbol there goes with the vocals. Give the other uh, guy a guy hell, I think. By the way, I used to always think, think the lyrics there, there were give the other guy a hand. I didn't know it was give the other guy hell, which doesn't really ring, doesn't really... <laughs> um, I, I sing it and it doesn't really fit with the melody in my opinion. Don't know, I just only realised that today listening to the song carefully. So, one, two and three, four. Then, I'll play it all up to speed for you in a moment. Part two, that offbeat crash on beat four, you count over to the next bar. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and. and it's a build up between the floor tom and snare drum on that third bar. One and two and three and four and one. And then we're into um, the rest of part five, uh, which is very similar to what we had at the beginning, part one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, and four. In fact, that's identical to line one of part one. Uh, and part two, line two, sorry, is just exactly the same as the first line. But it ends there on beat one, one, where I've written here, notes slows right down. Um, and I've skipped out a section here, but we'll talk about that in a second. First of all, let me um, play for you up to speed. Part three, part four, and then the whole of part five. Here we go. So as I said, we skip over a section because there's not nothing going on with the drums really. It's just bass drum and ride cymbal every one, two, three, every four beats. It slows right down so we get one, two, three, four, da, 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 that bit. And I think it's just every four beats, but you'll, you'll, you'll follow it. There's nothing complicated going on there. It's really part six where the drums re-enter at two minute 20, where we get exactly the same structure as our intro. Except we get some extra bass drums there. Bar four, as you can hear, we had one, two, three, four, one. So he's using the bass drum to fill in those gaps a bit more. Same for the second line, where we get second bar, one, two, three, four. And then it ends the same way with one, two, three, one. That bar of three at the end, cutting it short, going into part seven, our last section, where we've got one, two, three, and, so an extra crash symbol, you might have missed it on beat three of the bar there, uh, one, two, three, and four, one. You can leave out that crash, no one's gonna miss it. Um, that line is, we talked about already. But notice it's not flam on four, it goes back to the hi-hat on beat four. You can hear a hi-hat being played. Then the next line, I couldn't hear a crash symbol on beat one, but you could if you wanted to. We get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then this cool bit. One, two, three, E and a, starting on beat three. Three, E and a, four, E and a, one. Going into the next bar. Three, E and a, four, E and a, one. Four, two, and then three there. And it goes into the, the band stabs on the and of one, and of two on the next, line, on the next bar, so we get one, oh, one and two and three and a four E and a one and two. Four E and a one and two and three and four. Make sure you count it properly like that. One, two, three and a four E and a one and two and three and four and one and two and three. Three and a four E and a one and two and three. Somewhere else, somewhere I find that tricky. Two, da 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 One, two, three and a four E and a one and two and three and four. 
Then we go on to the last section. I've written here, note, move to ride symbol. You could play a crash symbol and beat one if you wanted to, but again, I couldn't hear a crash. It's just ride symbol. So we're playing for the first line, exactly the same as what we do with the hi-hat version. It goes back to the right symbol and snare on beat four. And then the last line we get one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The third bar this time, instead of starting on beat three with the snare drum, and I must admit this was also very hard to hear on the recording, exactly what notes he's playing, but this makes sense. One, two, three, and a four, three, and a one, and two, and. So we get one, two, three, and then down to the snare drum, and a four, E, and a one. Just starts on the end of three, but ends the same way as, as above. And the song ends with those two um, band stabs. Oh, one and two and three, four. That's where the song ends. So that last line, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three, and the four, and the one, and two, and. So now let me play for you the whole of part seven, up to speed. Here we go. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun for me to transcribe and to teach for you, and then of course to play as well. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download the free PDF that came with this website if you haven't already. And then while you're there, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. And what I currently offer for $97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. And that's over 500 full video song lessons where, just like this lesson, I teach you the song from start to finish. Every single bar is included. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart. And like I said, I've got over 500 famous and popular songs up on the website already, including, related to Paul McCartney, a load of Beatles video drum lessons if you're interested. And maybe I'll do some more Wings in the future as well. As so a thank you for signing up, I give you access to hundreds of little videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even drum solos. I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I've loaded for my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, then feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.